Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. I bet you have a stash of fabric scraps just waiting to be transformed into something amazing. Am I right? In this tutorial, we'll upcycle these fabric scraps into incredible creations. Oh yes. And the best part is you can make any shape you desire. Hearts, circles, butterflies, mushrooms, tags, or random shapes even. You can go further and explore shapes of trees, houses, balloons, flowers, and really anything that you can think of. All this without the need for any fancy die cuts or special tools. Let me show you how. For this project, you will obviously need your fabric scraps. And it's also a good idea to have a few special kind of pieces like uh, this, or for example, like this, something that's a little bit different, something that's gonna accentuate your pieces that you make, perhaps a little bit of lace. You might even have some ribbon like this. Anything you have little scraps of, Get it out and get it ready. Look at this ribbon, you know, from a present. I kept this little piece. These types of things, perfect for this project. All right, next thing you need is a Sharpie or a marker, really any marker that bleeds onto the other side. So what I mean is that when you draw on your paper, you will see it on the other side. A sewing machine is preferable for this project, but optional. You don't need to have a sewing machine. You can still do all of this without a sewing machine, even though I will sew my pieces. But we'll discuss all of that as we go along. All right, next thing that you need is a scrap piece of paper or any piece of paper, really. Again, you want whatever you draw on your paper to be bleeding onto the other side. So you don't want to be using cardstock at this step. Okay, so you have your paper, you have your Sharpie or your marker, and now you're going to draw your shape. So what shape should I do? I think today I'm going to go for a really simple shape, like a circle. I'm just going to draw a circle. You can freehand draw a circle. You can use whatever little tool you have, if you have a tool to draw a circle. You can use a, a cup, you can use a plate, whatever you have. Okay, so there's my circle. And I also want to do a more intricate design. So I'm going to go with the tree that's calling me right now. So now I'm going to draw a tree. And my drawing skills are not great, so... And I also don't want this tree to be absolutely massive, so that perhaps that trunk is a little bit too big. And the more of these little wiggly details and stuff you have, the more intricate the project, like the, the more difficult it is. Which is why I chose to do a, a more difficult one and a really easy one, like a circle. Okay, so there's my tree, and you can see it on the other side, perfect. Now with my circle, I'm just gonna go over it with my marker. And as you can see, it's no longer a perfect circle and it really doesn't have to be. So there we go, your designs are now on the page. Now I'm gonna turn the page around and I'm going to start gluing my fabrics down. And the reason why I've turned this around is because I have writing on this side and I just kind of want to cover that. So that's why we're turning to this side and I'm going to start with, let's do the circle. I'm going to have my glue here ready because we do need the glue, I have my scissors. And now what I'm going to do is get a few different things out of this box. And I'm kind of looking for things that go well together. So you can do random fabrics without really putting much thought into it. Like you can just do random, you know, random colors, whatnot. You can do two different things. Here you'll see a ribbon and I have this that I never knew what I'm gonna use this for. So I used it here. So really this is complete freedom here, what you do at this step. All right, here's what I decided to use. I picked out some yellows and golds and it looks like I'm going with the whole boho kind of a theme here because this was this little piece was an inspiration and this is what I'm gonna go with and I wanna use this in some way. And now here are my scrap fabrics. Let's get right into it. So I'm gonna start. The idea now is to cover the circle and you can see the outline of the circle. So I apply the glue onto the fabric I'm not too worried about bleeding of the glue through the fabric because I think in all of the things that I've done, this 
piece here is the only one that had some bleeding through you can see there it looks like a stain so you might want to be mindful of that and you can avoid that by using a brush to brush your once you apply the glue you know brush it down so you have a nice even line okay but i am just going to keep on going and as you can see i'm not putting too much thought into this well i suppose that as we keep going it will be a bit more evident we've just started so you can't really see but i'm not putting too much thought into it i'm just placing my fabrics down now i'm starting to think you know if i have a bit of black here i might want to add a little bit more black on up there somewhere i mean this none of this is important we're just covering the whole circle with the fabrics might go in with a bit of this now this here is a very thin material and the glue goes right through it as you'll see here on my desk still perfectly fine i'm just gonna smooth it down with a book page over the top now i'm gonna go in with my special piece i, I like every every piece as well not really uh, but i think my idea is that every piece has something a little special like let's call it a focal point really i don't think it's necessary but it's just nice like for example you can see the difference between these two this is the very first circle that i made this one here is just a little something there and a little special piece of fabric here like a bit of a I don't know a bit of a shiny nice fabric so in this piece today this this one is going to be my focal point i'm thinking i'm gonna put it down last cheating here with a little bit of ribbon not really a scrap piece of fabric but it can be i've got plenty of scrap ribbons too okay the point that i wanted to make here at this point is as you've noticed when i'm applying my glue i'm not being overly pedantic and going to the edges the role of my glue at the moment is just to hold the pieces down until i get to my sewing machine if you're not going to be using your sewing machine for this project you know you really have to go all the way to the edges because the sewing is not going to be there to hold everything in place and i'm just going to add another little something special i suppose a bit of this this is where you're kind of playing around you might not want to be putting any thought into this and just go ahead and slap your pieces down, you know. Now that I've done a few pieces, I'm experimenting a little bit more. I think that's the idea. But I'm definitely experimenting more than, you know, when I did my first few pieces. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. In fact, I'll do it on camera. And all I'm going to do is sew all of the straight edges using a zigzag st stitch. I might start here do this one first and then whatever else is visible okay here we go some machine ready to go and as i said i'm gonna do zigzag stitch all around the first piece everything will be speeded up obviously and i'm not overly pedantic with my machine i don't care how thick my layers are none of that you know i've had this machine for that long many many years and i just sew right through everything no issues excellent so that first piece sewn now i'm going to start doing my edges and i might even just continue down and then do the, these edges here but i don't plan on doing the whole thing in all in one go i hope that makes sense and this is what i mean now i've gone all the way around this piece and now i'm going to break this string and i'm gonna come in on my next edges let's say i'm going to do this all right and then i'll come back and i'll do these edges and then these you see what i what i mean i'm leaving all of the stitches all over the place not worrying about any of that stuff at this point anyway all right so that's all sewn around and the back looks like this it's really messy threads all over the place i didn't even bother cutting them moving them out of the place none of that stuff before we move on to the next stage i'm going to go and repeat the process on the tree and what i am going to do on the tree is choose maybe like browns you know whatever i have that's brown and on the trunk and then use greens on the, on the branches and stuff up there you can play around with that kind of thing as well and another thing that you can do as well of course is instead of popping your fabrics down randomly like i did in the previous piece 
you can do your fabrics or your strips of fabrics in a line so this here is ribbon and these are all you know my strips of fabrics this was actually two pieces you know just strips of fabrics like you can see this is the whole piece of ribbon here you know one wide piece of ribbon that i then broken up with this second piece okay so when you're laying your fabrics down you can do straight lines like this what else do we have? Just straight lines. Just cover the whole paper. Keep going down. So that's also a pretty cool look as well. Actually, I really like how this looks. But anyway, I've started with the random. So I'm going to continue with the random. So that's my uh, tree completely covered. And... I'm now just adding, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit with this ribbon, but you know what? There are no rules and I'm allowed. So next thing I'm going to add my special piece, maybe I'm just contemplating. I'm thinking of doing something like this right above the trunk, but it's kind of hard to see kind of where exactly is the trunk. I can see perfect here. And what I want basically is this to be right there somewhere. So. I will have to add this piece later on. First thing I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and repeat the process that I just have done previously on this one here. So just sewing galore. I'll be right back. There are two things that I forgot to mention. When you finish gluing down your pieces and before you start sewing, make sure you lift your piece up against the window and check that all of your design is covered. So make sure that the material, the fabrics are overlapping your design. Check. Another thing I forgot to mention is when you're sewing the edges, you don't need to sew the outside edges, all of this, because all of that is going to be cut off. Okay, so from now, from this point, we have my two pieces ready to be cut out. And it's quite messy looking, there's strings everywhere and everything like that. So in order to get from mess, to really neat, beautiful and usable kind of pieces that are also, you know, neat and beautiful at the back. What we need to do at this stage is I, instead of cutting the, these strings off here at the front and then having all little strings kind of poking out, I go to the back and then I want to bring all of those strings from the outside onto here, onto the back. So it seems like it's too much work, but it really doesn't take that long and the result, you know, is quite neat. So the way that I do it, I'll just grab any string, pull on it and then bring that string to the front. So let me show you up close. Here is my string. I'm going to pull on it. See that? And see how it brought that other string up with it? See that little loop? Yes, that's what we want to bring on the inside. Chop it off and keep going until done. Any strings that are outside of my designs, I don't worry about because they're going to be cut off anyway. Okay, so all of those strings that are within the tree have now been cut off and I'm gonna do the same for this one. I'll do it off camera and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, that's done. So the reason why you needed a marker that bleeds through onto the other side is for the next step, really. So first you needed the outline, you need to see it on this side so you, you know how much you want to cover. And then you need it on the other side so you know where to cut. Does that make sense? That's why we did the, the marker that bleeds through. Okay, let's start, let's start with the simple shape, just very easy and straightforward. At this point, you're simply going to cut your design out. Okay, that's how that's looking at the moment. That's the back, that's the front. And this goes into the bin. So there's really not much. I mean, you can be a little bit crazy and like try and salvage that, but I'm not gonna. Now moving on to my tree. So obviously these designs are much easier to cut. Circles, rectangles, tags, and even mushrooms and flower, maybe not flowers. Anyway, like the some designs are very easy to cut, very easy to make tree more intricate design you can see it's quite it can be quite difficult at times depending on how thick your fabric is plus don't forget this fabric that's overlapping so one little tip which i'm sure you know with fussy cutting and this type of thing as well is instead of moving your scissors around the shape you use you move the shape 
and you hold the scissors in place. I kind of do a bit of both, to be honest with you, but you can see that most of the times my scissors are stationary in that one spot and I'm moving this hand around. And there's the tree cut out, tree and circle. Love how that looks so far. And that's going into the bin. Okay, at this point, I mean, this is ready to go really if you wanna pop it down in your project just like this. So uh, do keep in mind that these edges here, depending on how much glue you added, like some of the edges are not going to be glued down. I mean, this is pretty good. Seems like I did a pretty good job with that glue. If you're not going to be sewing and you, you don't plan to go on to the next step, which is what we're doing now, just make sure you apply plenty of glue. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is cover all of the back. And this is the easiest way to do it. You grab, this is a file folder. I'm just using some cardstock, which is actually a file folder. Now I'm going to apply some glue. And because I know I'm taking this to my sewing machine again, I'm not overly, you know, worried about where the glue goes. If I wasn't going to sew around this, I would really get that glue right to the edge. Down it goes. How cool does that look? Oh, I just remembered. I did want to add this piece. It would be better if it wasn't so dark, but the light in the room is kind of playing a bit of a part as well. It's not quite as dark as it looks in the video. So obviously before you glue it down, the, whatever you're making, if you want to add extra pieces on top, maybe perhaps a good idea to do it before the tree is glued down. And you know what? I'm just going to glue this piece on top rather than trying to, you know, peel this off. And now repeat for the circle. So when I was trying to work out how to do this, what I did at first is cut out two circles and then try and apply the second circle on top of this, which really uh, doesn't make much sense because this is much easier to do it this way because it just is, you'll see in a moment why. All right, there are my two pieces glued down, ready to go. Before I cut this out, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine again and sew the edges, just the edges, and that will ensure that all of the fabric that's not glued down is going to be most definitely sewn into place. So here's another thing as well. When you have simple designs like a circle or a square, whatever, this step is also much easier to do. Then when you have wiggly lines and all sorts of things happening, you know, when you're trying to sew around the edges. So here at this point, I'm just going to use a straight stitch and go all the way around. All right, that one's done very easy. Just went all the way around and perfect, done. Now with the tree, this part will be easy. Straight lines, but now when we come to all of these wiggly lines, now that is going to be a bit of a nightmare for an inexperienced, I wouldn't call myself an experienced sewer at the moment, but you know, I'm not a seamstress and I'm just winging it, have been from when I started using my sewing machine. So I don't find these wiggly lines particularly easy to go around. And that's one thing that you might want to keep in mind when you're designing your little things. And done, okay. All right, now that that's done, I'm just trying to decide what I wanna do here. I'm just gonna go through the thinking process with you. So you can see I'm laying it down. I kind of feel like if it wasn't so dark, it would work, but it's so dark. And now I feel like, you know, do I wanna go like for some type of a whimsical look? You know, whatever I could kind of do here, it still will work, I think, but I'm just looking for that one piece that's gonna feel like, yes, this is the one. And I haven't gotten to that point yet. But I'm just showing you like how cool all of these little things look when you pop them down. Not necessary, but I really like that. It doesn't really make much sense, but, but I like it. So I'm just going to go with it. Since I completely forgot about it at the sewing stage, I'm just going to glue it down. But I would have preferred to sew it down. I'm not being pedantic as I usually am because I'm filming and trying to hurry, but I would be trying to be really quite neat and cut these little extra pieces off. And in fact, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, and now that that's done, we're simply going to follow the shape that we've done and cut all of the excess cardboard or cardstock off. 
Okay, circle done. And now this tree, again, the more intricate your design, the more fiddly this process is as well. But you're simply just following that design and cutting the excess off. It might look quite nice if you leave a little bit of a margin like this when you're cutting off. So you can play around with all of that. Excellent. All right, so that's what it looks like at the back and obviously at the front. And now it's time to, for just final touches to make it look nice and sealed and complete. So what I like to do is ink the edges. And as you're inking the edges, you might notice your fabric fraying. See all that fabric fraying? We'll come back to that in a moment. I also like to ink the back as well. This is all, you know, not something that you have to do, but I think it makes the project look complete and finished especially with these intricate designs where you might see little bits of cardboard you see on this edge here you know the little bits of cardboard are kind of visible you can see just there a little bit of visible cardboard but when you ink those edges you are blending it all in this all really depends on how much of a perfectionist you are really okay final touches here we come we're just getting rid of any of that fraying fabric so i'm just going to go around you know, this might not be something that bothers you, but I like to get rid of these little bits. And now as a final, final touch, which I wasn't really going to show in this video, but we're all adults here, so exercise caution. I just like to very quickly singe the edges or anything that's kind of sticking out with the lighter, just to make sure that there's no excessive fraying. Again, be very careful when you do this or just skip this all together. But here we go. Just very quickly, very lightly. That one's done. I'm going to repeat on this one. And there we go. Nice and neat and finished and beautiful. This can be a journal looking spot that can go inside a journal. Or if you're going to use the pieces, like oh, let's say to adorn a journal cover. This is quite a large one, but just as an example, goes on a journal cover. Then obviously you can skip the whole doing the back thing because it's going to be glued down and the back is not going to be visible anyway. But I think that looks quite beautiful and especially, you know, depending on the kind of materials that you use and you can add further embellishments like I did here. You can see that gold button and I added these little stickers, these little round gold stickers and I have some sequin here that I glued down. You know, where you go from here, totally up to you. You can keep embellishing or just leave your pieces as they are. And now just quickly show you some of the other pieces that I did for more inspiration. So here you can see butterflies, obviously. And I just traced this uh, butterfly that I have in my stash, just traced this shape. So you can trace any type of thing you have in your stash and make one of these. So here you can see random scraps of fabric, but then I went in with the gold. Of course, gold and dark goes really well together. This is just a ribbon little piece that I had pop it there in the middle. And then I went in and glued some buttons right on top. And that's the back. These buttons here, they're shank buttons, meaning that they have this shank bit at the back. And of course you wanna remove that, very easy to do. If it's a plastic button, might be a bit more hard if, if it's a metal button. So I just come in and kind of use whatever tool I have and then just get rid of that those backs, right? To make them flat. And then when that's gone, you know, your button is flat and you can use hot glue or, or whatever glue you have really to glue it on your pieces. And to be honest with you, in the video, the light is pretty bad today and it's really not coming through like the vibrancy of the gold on this, uh, this one especially. The colors are kind of very muted and dark in the video, but it's very, very, very gold and vibrant. I don't know if I turn the light on, you can sort of see a little bit better. Look at that. How beautiful does that look? So exquisite and just absolutely stunning. Look at this. I just love the butterflies. Okay, next we have these random shapes. Just do a squiggly random shape and then look at this. And then, you know, follow the same procedure, I suppose. And these pieces I would probably use as journaling spots in a journal or even... Here's a cover that I used one of my large buttons on, but you know, this can go on a cover, let's say this way, perhaps you can have your closure underneath, you know, that looks pretty good. 
and then have a little book plate up here. It looks quite nice. Do something like that, why not? Next shape I have are the mushrooms. I love the mushrooms. You can see here, I actually covered most of the stuff that's underneath, which you can see when it's close up and in real life, like this in video, can't really see. But there are patches of fabric underneath. But then I covered it with this. This is actually the washing mesh for washing your, you know, delicates and stuff like that. And then I've got a little bit of lace down here. Just, I don't know, that was my special, my special little thing on this one. And then on this one, here's my special little thing here. It's kind of not visible straight away, but I like to have one special little thing on each piece. Absolutely love the mushrooms and you can do like circles, you know, the whole mushroom thing. The mushrooms can be taken to so many, many different levels of amazingness. All right, next shape I have here are the hearts. You've seen this one. And this is the very first piece that I did for this project. And you can see, I just uh, used the fabrics, you know, straight across like this. And then I started doing the whole patchwork thing when they kind of like all over the place. So you can even uh, free, a free hand draw a heart. You can see this one's not perfect. You know, it's flat here. It's round, more rounded here. And you know, depends on what kind of look you like. This one here is a perfect heart. And the way that you can do a perfect heart, just in case if you're unfamiliar, you fold a piece of paper down and then you, you draw just half of a heart, right? I would probably use a pencil first and then go in with my Sharpie. Let's say just like that. And then you can cut this out. And then when you open it up, it's going to be a full symmetrical heart. The way that I did it, Instead of cutting it out, because I like to glue my fabric all around, you know, to make sure. I just go over it very slowly with the Sharpie. So that it bleeds through here and onto the next page. You can't really see in the video, but I can see the outline here. So then again, I go in with the Sharpie. And there's my heart and it should be on the other side as well. Symmetrical heart. I'm sure there's many other ways of achieving the same thing, but... That's how I did the heart thing. You can also make yourself a template like I did here. This is a cereal box and just made myself a template. This is a completely different project, but I was cutting out little hearts for, I don't know, a pocket like this. I really love this look. This is gonna be a page in a journal. So this is kind of perhaps a way that I envisioned these hearts to be used, even though, you know, this one's quite wide and large. I would need a really large, large page to fit this one. You can make smaller versions, obviously, but perhaps this can also be glued down sideways onto a page like this in a journal. So it can be like a, a, you know, a tuck spot. I'm not sure if you want to really go through all of this and do all this work just to glue it down inside a journal. I feel like this, these pieces should be star of the show, you know, right on that cover. That's how I feel anyway. Next shape I have are the tags. Very, very easy. This one, because you've got straight edges and no fiddly bits to cut out. So I really love the look of this. And you can see that I've, I'm kind of sticking to the same color scheme, sort of. You can see here the white and the pink, and I have a bit of this silver fun stuff happening. You see a bit of writing there, which was kind of bothering me until I decided I'm not gonna let it bother me. So, you know, it just happens to be a very see-through material there. So that's fine. And then again, these are shank buttons that I used hot glue to glue them down. And that's the tags done. I just want to bring this one back. And I think I already mentioned, but you can see here, we've got all different materials and different kind of color scheme. Here, there's only two different things. So I really love this. What should we call it? Like a monochrome? That's not the right word, but two-tone, two-tone. Let's go with that. I love this look as well. So if you just have pieces of one particular fabric, I never really knew how I'm gonna use this red fabric that I've had in my stash for so long. And I think this is the perfect project. Look look how cool that looks. That's, that's just so awesome. And then ribbons, of course, come in such beautiful designs usually that just makes sense to include a bit of ribbon, I suppose. Then we have the tree, which of course we've just done. And imagine if I had more trees here, like little trees, I feel like showing each project in numerous examples makes it look so much better. And last but not least, we have the circles. And this is pretty much 
think probably the second project that I did just laid down that fabric didn't really think too much and then I started kind of playing around with adding some special pieces in I'm calling them special pieces you know something that has a bit of shine has a bit of twinkle you know a bit of gold bit of this bit of that bit of lace you know and it makes it it's better isn't it and then of course I love this one it's quite boho perhaps this black lace doesn't go that well but the gold and this piece here, maybe I could have added a blue. Imagine if I had this type of blue a lace little flower here. Perfect. Would have been so much better. But to be honest, this looks much better in real life than it actually does on video. And there we have it. How simple is that? I really wanted to fit all of my pieces on screen, but unfortunately they can't fit. I've made 15 pieces all together only in the last two days, three days maybe. And... I thoroughly enjoyed the process, apart from the wiggly cutting and the wiggly sewing, everything else. So calming and relaxing. And now the colors are coming through because the light has changed. Look how beautiful that looks. I absolutely love this project. Now, will this project help you get rid of all of your fabric scraps? In all honesty, probably not. You know how that goes. You make projects, you make more scraps. But, you know, at least it's a start and you create something beautiful in the process, right? Please let me know in the comments down below what you think about this project and also which one of these is your favorite. Personally, my favorite one is the butterflies, even though it was a little bit difficult with the cutting and all of that. But I do love how they turned out. I'm not sure if it's the shape or if it's the actual things that I used. So if I had done this on a heart, for example, it would have looked just as good. Then that's followed by mushrooms, and I love the tree. In fact, I've, I love all of them, apart from maybe the hearts. This was the very first one I did, not my favorite, clearly. We can see why. And I think the more lively your fabrics, the more lively your project. So this one here probably would have looked better if it wasn't so dark, even though it does have that sparkly mesh type fabric here on top. But still, you know, it doesn't look as vibrant as the butterflies. In any case, please let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.